Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm gonna be coming at you with five hidden features inside of Logic 10's Piano Roll. So these tips and tricks, these hidden features are gonna make your life a lot easier when you're working in the Piano Roll inside of Logic. Now, I'm gonna cut this into a short, you know what the video, video is about. Let's just dive in and get started. All right, so that's the track that we'll be working through while we're checking out these hidden features. So these first two patches here, these are, this is from our pack Sphere. It's a sound set for Serum, comes with massive patches as well. I've purposely played in a progression for the video that's very sparse. Each chord is only two notes. I did this so we can see the information in the piano roll a little bit clear. So the first thing we're gonna check out is gonna be really helpful. Raise your hand if you've ever been annoyed or pissed off that you cannot see note names of all the notes that you have in a chord or in a melody, and you're always having to reference, you know, go and hover over a note or kind of figure out, okay, there's C3, so that's this note, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that you can actually get visual feedback on every note that's there. All you have to do is go to view and select note labels. And then if you just zoom in ever so much, just slightly, you can see that now I can see all of my note names. So this is super helpful when you're you know, messing around in your piano roll. Maybe you lay a simple chord progression down and you want to turn your chord into a seventh, you know, seventh chord, sixth chord suspended, whatever it is. You can now just drag and see, you can see, okay, this is a G. So like, let's say I know that because this is in my key, you know, I could take this, pop it here type thing. Like, it's just really helpful to be able to see the note names. Now, kind of expanding on that is this button here, and this is called the collapse mode. So this is really helpful if you don't want to see a giant piano roll going from C negative two to C eight. And maybe you're like, okay, I like, you know, I got, I like my chord progression and I just want to edit maybe the timing or the note duration, right? Well, you can hit collapse this, you can hit cl collapse this. This is not called collapse this, it's called collapse mode. You can hit that. And then what you'll see is a condensed view where you're only looking at basically a piano roll. It's a custom piano roll where the only notes that are available are the ones that are being used at some point in that mini region. All right, so next up is going to be something that's really going to help any of you out there who find yourself going up here to change the value of your grid while you're like programming, you're trying to, pro trying to program more intricate hi-hat patterns or just doing things with unique rhythms, right? And you can, of course, use the brush tool and then set your scale quantize with the brush tool. But I think there's still an easier way or just another way you can make this whole process easier. And that's by assigning a key command to change the grid value. So just go up here to Logic Pro X, go to key commands and hit edit. And then type in division in the search bar. I've already done that while I was preparing for the video. And you'll have all these options. Now, you can actually set up a key command for specific grid values. So if you find yourself using like a one thirty second note triplet a lot, you can set that up, right? Uh, you can also set up anything in between that. Well, what I like to do for me personally just works. I have set higher division and set lower division assigned to a key command. So that means I can move up and down through the grid values by just hitting a key. I never have to move my mouse. So I have command comma for set higher division and set lower division. I have control comma. And to do this, you just you just select learn by key label and then type in that information. So you can set up to be whatever you like. So let's go back to this little MIDI, this empty MIDI clip here, empty MIDI region. And let's throw in a little hi-hat pattern. So I'm going to use my pencil tool. delete that one. So we just have a simple. Now let's say I wanted to stick some type of triplet feeling right here at bar 5.3. bar five point three. Well, what I can do is just hit, if I want to speed it up, I'm going to hit command and comma. And now my grid value changed to a quarter note, right? And so now I can just simply take this and chain and just drag and copy. And I can go back to, you know, another grid value. So this is also really helpful when you're working with aligning audio. Like let's say you use audio, you trick you like to trigger audio to you know create your drum groove. So if we get out of the piano roll here and we zoom in, we can actually see that the grid value changes as well in the main editing window. So if we speed this up, we can see that we're getting more tick marks, right? So that's also really helpful when you, you know, when you're trying to line something up and there's not enough tick marks, you don't have to go up here and click and move your mouse. You can just hit a key command and you can see all the information that you need. 
All right, so next up is kind of a combination key command slash mouse click. I don't know what you call that. That probably has a name, but it's very useful for fixing the duration, the length of notes, right? So for instance, this is something that I find myself always wanting to use in Ableton and Ableton doesn't have it. I've searched high and low and it's just not there. So like, let's say you play in a key, you, you play on your keys, you play in a chord progression. And let's say it, with this example right here, this first bar, bar five, five through six, each note, you know, is a little bit different length because you're playing on the keys and you're just worried about getting the, you know, the actual notes, right? As opposed to duration. Well, how, what if you want each note to just be, you know, a certain length and you want it to all to be very, very tight and very cohesive? Well, you don't have to go through and edit these one by one. You can actually highlight all of them that you want to change, then hold down Alt or Option and Shift and then select and change the length. You'll see that all of them snap now to the same length. So let's say I want to keep them nice and tight. I can just do that. So let's undo that and grab all the notes that I want right there. Again, Option or Alt shift click right and now it highlights everything and makes everything even now you can expand on this by changing the velocity like let's say you play it in yourself and the velocities are all you know over the place and you want it to all be one steady velocity sometimes you want that and sometimes you don't well, what you can do here is you can pull up your velocity tool which is just hit escape on your bring up your toolbar hit v and then again you're gonna do the same thing so here i'll go through and We'll, we'll make these different velocities so you can see how this works. All right, so now we're going to start from scratch here. Velocity tool, highlight all the notes, hold down Alt and Shift, and then click onto one of the notes. And now all of them are changing the same value at the same time. All right, and bonus tip or trick here, just because now that I'm thinking about things that Ableton can't do, you can't join two notes together. I don't know why. In Ableton, you just go like this, click and drag. So it's a lot of clicking, but let's say you wanted to go through and make this all one note. You can hit Command J on your keyboard and boom, the job is done. All right, so the fourth hidden feature that we're gonna look at is a way, again, to minimize use of the mouse, right? If you're working on long set, long days, long sessions, you can get carpal tunnel real easy. So. What we're gonna be looking at in this next tip is how to move notes both up in terms of pitch and also over left and right on the grid using a key command or using your keys. So moving the notes around with your key commands. Now, to do this, all you have to do is highlight a note and moving it up and down is pretty easy. If you hold down option and move and hit your arrow keys up or down, you can move up chromatically. Now, if you wanna jump an octave, and I use this all the time, especially with bass patches, you hold down alt, or option and shift and then arrow up and down. So that's really useful. Now the next one, you probably guessed it, we're gonna move over left and right. So you can hold down alt or option and then hit your arrow keys left or right. Now you need to activate this to your own liking or to your basically set of preference. And to do that, first time just right click on one of the notes, go here, see this menu and you'll see where it says set nudge value. And I have mine set to division. You could do bar, you could do beat, but if you are following along and you saw the previous section where we created a key command to change our grid value, just set it to division because now what you can do, let's say I'm like working on this chord progression here. Let's say I wanted like a triplet vibe going on somewhere in here, right? What I can do is hold down command on my keyboard and I'm gonna hit co command comma to change my grid value, right? We talked about that previously. So so now what I can do is I can hold down option and then move over left and right, but it's going to be at a, you know, on a triplet grid. Right. And again, if we want to change our grid back because we set that up previously, I can hit con control and comma and we're back down to a 16th note value. And then again, I could just keep moving my, my note around. It's that simple. So the last hidden feature that we're going to check out resides in this functions tab in the piano roll. So open your piano roll, go to functions and then hover over MIDI transform. There is tons of awesome stuff in this little drop-down window. So you can randomize a lot. You can randomize 
pitch velocity, pitch velocity length, which you can actually use for to have logic create melodies for you. Um, it's, it's so all you'd have to do is create a melody, set your scale quantize on, you know, quantize your scale, right? So if you're in the key of F minor, make sure you select F and then minor, and then go to functions, go to MIDI transform, and select random pitch, velocity, and length, and logic will generate melodies for you in your scale. Next, you have some things like that I use all the time, double speed, half speed. You can take a progression. So this is actually helpful with like drum builds and I use it a lot on hi-hats as well. Just you know, half time or you know double time, everything that's there. You even have humanize and a bunch of other, uh, other options that you can mess around with. So humanize is a cool one. So let's say I wanted to use humanize could work on this track here. Like if, I, if, th if this felt too rigid to me, I could go to functions, go to MIDI transform, and we will go to humanize. And then you have this little option of how much you want it to humanize basically. So we'll just keep it as is. We'll hit select and operate. And I'll hit select and operate again. And you can see as I do this, my velocity's changed and the timing, if I zoom in on some of these notes, they're just ever so off grid, right? And so that might be cool. And that's that's this is obviously really useful for genres like like old school hip hop, lo-fi, ambient, where you want things off of the grid. All right, so that's gonna sum up this video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, post those, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video and you wanna keep up to date with all of the tutorial content that we're releasing on this channel, please subscribe and smash that notification bell so you guys get an update every time we release a new tutorial. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching.